Hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Zhang. I'm an internal medicine uh, physician and a prior medical researcher. Uh, today's topic is uh, insulin resistance. And we decided to talk about it because this is a very common uh, condition affecting about one third of the population and uh, one half for people 60 years and older. Um, I will tell you that uh, something you never heard of before. And I think that the insulin resistance in the early stage is because of glycogen orbit load. And uh, if you have this information, uh, you can actually cure it yourself, especially in the early stages. Uh, let's begin. So insulin resistance uh, can lead to diabetes. And uh, it is a modern problem. And uh, it never happened in the ancient time. Uh, I believe this because in ancient time, and uh, the calories are scarce, and we don't have uh, overeating problems. Now we are uh, getting too much calories a day, and we're not exercising. And we people are became uh, not like to exercise anymore. So, what is insulin resistance? And uh, insulin resistance means that uh, after you eating, your glucose uh, remains high after two hours. It is tested by a glyco uh, glucose tolerance test. So you give giving an amount of glucose, you check the glucose level every hour. And by two hours, your glucose should drop down below 140. So if it's still above 140, uh, then you've got insulin resistance. Um, so how that happened? And uh, let's look at how glucose is metabolized. So after eating um, carbohydrates, they are digested in the GI tract and the glucose is produced. You know, glucose absorbs pretty well and uh, they go to the bloodstream absorb in about half an hour. So in two hours, the glucose should come down. And uh, after glucose enters the bloodstream and uh, they have several ways the body can clear it up quickly. One is by all the body cells. So, you know, all the, most the body cells use glucose. So they can take up glucose. Um, and at that time, also the insulin levels goes high too. But just because the glucose is running high after eating um, will not cause body cell to metabolize faster. So you like your liver, your kidney, your heart, they still use the same amount of glucose. So really they cannot bring down glucose quickly. And the second mechanism would be uh, your fat cells. So adipose tissue um, take, out, take up glucose and uh, transition that into fatty acids. So this is your storage form of energy and you can use for later. But uh, synthesized uh, fatty acids take many, many steps and uh, time consuming. They will not bring down the glucose level in two hours. And uh, there is another pathway, which is a glycogen. So glycogen stored in the organs, mainly in the skeletal muscle and the liver. And uh, it takes up glucose pretty quickly and uh, it is structured like, uh, uh, like a tree. Many is a starch and on the base, they have a protein and then the glucose starting binding to it. They create it like a tree structure with uh, adding of glucose each time. And uh, it adds very quickly. So glycogen synthesis has two uh, pathways. One is insulin resistant. Oh no, sorry, uh, insulin dependent. Another one is insulin independent, which means that with without insulin, uh, the glycogen can be synthesized. So you can see that uh, in a perfect world, um, the glycogen will play a bigger role and get your glucose coming down you would never have insulin resistance. Now, what's the problem? You know, in modern society, and people are not exercising, people are eating too much, and we also snack in between meals with carbohydrates. So our glucose is running high all the time. And uh, our glycogen actually is full, and uh, it reached the capacity. So you cannot take more uh, glucose. And uh, as a result, our glucose is still running high after two hours. So now 
suddenly feel like you have insulin resistance because you're going to need a higher insulin level to maintain the glucose. The pancreas that time will try to make more insulin and try to compensate for increased glucose. And uh, what's the consequence of that? Well, first, persistent higher level of um, insulin will have to, the pancreas have to work very hard to generate that. Eventually, you're going to burn down the beta cells. So when you lost half of the beta cells, you develop diabetes. Insulin resistance can lead to uh, obesity and even high blood pressure and a high insulin level. And that eventually leads to a metabolic syndrome. Now you're talking about increased risk of heart disease and stroke, even dementia. So how to cure insulin resistance? I think that the key is in the gly uh, glycogen. So if you can burn down your glycogen and uh, you can cure an early stage of insulin resistance, let's look at how. And uh, glycogen uh, has 100 grams of molecules in the liver. So liver glycogen um, is a storage form of glucose. And uh, when the glucose level is high, the liver takes it up and store it at, at storage and then release it when glucose is running down, uh, maybe several hours after eating. And uh, e if you can eat three meals a day and do not snack, uh, that maybe can reduce the glycogen. And uh, also, you need to cut down total calorie or at least cut down the carbohydrates. Or you can skip a meal. Another way to do that is a, per, a length of time between meals. And so for instance, you can uh, eat at 4 p.m. and the next day eat it at uh, 9 to 10 a.m. So that you can reduce the amount of glycogen in the liver. Um, but you know, compared to the mass of glycogen, liver is only a small part. So your muscle for a 70 gra a kilogram person uh, that is a 400 gram of glycogen, uh, which is uh, probably like 1600 of calories stored. And muscle glycogen is different than the liver because it takes up uh, glucose when the glucose is running high, but it does not release it. They keep it until it's consumed by the muscle. So how? Exercising. Uh, if you do more exercise, you burn down the muscle glycogen. So given the huge amount of uh, glycogen store in the muscle, if you can just consume half of it, you talk about 800 calories. And uh, you will take several days, you know, to fill it up. And which means that uh, if you exercise one day, you'll be protected for even two or three days from rising glucose. For people with early stages of insulin resistance, combined and uh, low calorie diet and exercise can cure your condition. So you should be empowered to burn down your glycogen. For people uh, with pre-diabetes, uh, you probably already uh, have some metabolic problems uh, with glycogen synthesis and uh, increased fatty acid synthesis. Uh, you probably need a more uh, intense exercising to do that. So for people with diabetes not on insulin, um, mainly you can, uh, through exercise, you can prevent further damage to the pancreas. And uh, if you can lose the weight, probably your diabetes can be gone. Uh, for people with uh, uh, diabetes on insulin, um, it's become metabolically more complex and uh, you need more intense uh, exercise programs. And uh, at the least, it will cut down the amount of insulin do uh, dose and also help to prevent it again. Uh, but uh, for a lot of people, uh, jogging and walking or running may not be possible because of, you know, associated with osteoarthritis and uh, you can't run, you can't walk. So really we need a more comprehensive um, 
exercise program uh, to try to uh, get you burn uh, your glycogen more efficiently. So, you know, now um, you know this and uh, you are in power to control yourself. And uh, my slogan would be burn down your glycogen. 